All right, something you may be hearing about, especially on social media, is this thing called a seiche. I'm meteorologist Erica Page, and I'm gonna break down what this is because it's actually a pretty relatively common phenomenon that we see on Lake Erie each and every year. Now, whether or not it's super noticeable, that all depends on the strength of it. So it all has to do with a couple of different things, strong winds and big changes in pressure. So think these big, strong areas of low pressure sweeping through the region that allow us to get all of those really gusty conditions and especially if it's more of a southwest to westerly wind. That's where you can see these become a bit more apparent and we see them mostly on closed bodies of water and you look at Lake Erie and you can really see that it's that perfect kind of setup to get these kind of meteorological phenomenons essentially happening. So what exactly is occurring with this? Well, essentially what's happening is that strong westerly wind is helping to push all of the waves and all of that water that's in the western basin of Lake Erie and it pushes it to the other side. So you get what we call kind of an oscillating motion where waves at times will be lower and then they'll be higher and this will happen over a couple different kind of kind of time scales. So sometimes you can get in anywhere between about four hours to seven hours from when the water's at its lowest to when it peaks again. But you see because it's an oscillating motion, you may repeat that pattern a couple of different times throughout the duration of this event. So take what's happening as we kind of look ahead towards the end of this week. You've got low water in the western basin out towards Toledo and all of a sudden that strong westerly wind helping to push that higher water the farther east you go across Lake Erie. And what happens is a lot of times when we see these setups occurring, you'll see these low water advisories issued. Places like Sandusky out towards the islands, this is where you can tend to see it at least here locally in our area. But what happens on the other side is for folks out towards the Buffalo area, a lot of times you get what we call these lakeshore flooding type setups. And sometimes that can also have an impact on some of the rivers, creeks and streams that feed out of Lake Erie. But it's because you're piling up all of that water and it has nowhere else to go. Now at some point this system will exit off towards the east and everything will resume back to normal, meaning all of that water that you piled up in the eastern basin now has to work its way back and backfill back towards the western basin. So it does happen and it usually happens on a little bit of a quicker time scale. So we never want folks out in say the western part of Lake Erie if you were to be able to see the bottom just because you do have that return flow and you don't want to be caught by surprise if several feet of water then all of a sudden start returning. But it is an interesting phenomenon. Again, seiches are very fascinating. We've had a couple notable ones here in Lake Erie, one back in 1884. It was about 22 feet that they recorded. Unfortunately, 78 people did die. But what's interesting out of this setup is that you had so much water basically pushing in some of that ice out towards Niagara Falls that it actually stopped the flow on Niagara Falls temporarily. More recently, one that we've experienced back in 2008, 16 to 18 foot waves out on Lake Erie, and it did cause some flooding out towards Buffalo. Now your 19 first alert forecast, certified most accurate since 2004. Safe.